Good morning, on this the second Sunday after Easter. I am as always very, very grateful to Guy for making it possible for us to share in this brief reflection on God's word to us. We begin, as we have become accustomed to beginning, with a prayer for the people of Ukraine and holding in our thoughts and hearts people in every war-torn area of our world today. So let us pray for all who suffer as a result of conflict and ask that God may give us peace. Heavenly Father, hear our prayers for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine. Lord, we ask for peace for those who need peace. Reconciliation for those who need reconciliation and comfort for all those who do not know what tomorrow will bring. Lord, may your kingdom come and may your will be done. Lord God, we ask for you to be with us all, especially children who are suffering as the crisis in Ukraine deteriorates. Lord, for those who are anxious and fearful, for those who are bereaved, injured, or have lost their lives, and for those who have lost loved ones. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Amen. Our Gospel reading for today falls into two halves. It is taken from John chapter 21 and verses 1 to 19. And I'm going to begin by reading the first 14 verses. Jesus appeared to his disciples again by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples did not realise that it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. We know that after the resurrection, Jesus appeared to his disciples many times. But we also know that his presence with them was different from the way it had been before. His disciples didn't know when they might see him and they didn't always recognise him straight away. In many ways, I think that's what it often feels like for us. We know that Jesus is alive and that he has promised to be with us. But perhaps we don't always have that strong sense of his presence. And perhaps we don't always recognise him when he comes to us in the different circumstances of our lives. On this occasion, Jesus helped the disciples in a way that he had helped them long before, even before he had called them to follow him. Once again, they had been struggling with a long night of fishing and they had caught nothing. Just as he had done on that previous occasion, Jesus told them to throw their nets on the other side of the boat and they became laden with fish. I wonder perhaps if Jesus was reminding them that he was still able to provide for them in the way that he had done before, even in the most ordinary circumstances of their lives, in their daily routine. John was the first to recognise that Jesus was there. It is the Lord, he shouted. And Peter, hearing that, jumped into the water to swim to him. There is a promise for us. Jesus is with us in the routine of our ordinary lives. He's with us from Monday to Saturday, as well as on Sunday. He longs for us to recognise him in our ordinary lives and to involve him there. A lot has been written about why 153 fish. One suggestion I like particularly. It was thought at the time that 153 was the total number of species of fish in the world. Perhaps John is reminding us that Jesus can give us everything we need. He can provide for us completely. I wonder, as Jesus served breakfast, if the disciples thought back to the feeding of the 5,000 and remembered the miracle of Jesus' provision for them then. Or perhaps they thought about the Last Supper Jesus had shared with them on the night before the cross. And now they rejoiced that Jesus was alive and that all their hope in him could be alive also. The resurrection of Jesus is the reason we can have hope amidst the darkness, the suffering, the uncertainty of our world. Let's pray. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now Chloe will sing for us. Thank you.
I'm reading now the second half of our passage from John's Gospel. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here is an intimate moment between Simon Peter and Jesus. So intimate, it was probably Peter himself who shared it with John so that John could include it in his gospel. Perhaps there is a reminder for us today that we may find Jesus very present with us as we gather to worship with others. But perhaps it is those moments when we are alone with him that his greatest work is done in our lives. For Peter, it was a moment when he was so painfully aware once again of the way in which he had denied Jesus three times. But Peter also became aware that Jesus still wanted to lead Peter on in his relationship with him. He still said to Peter, as he had said those years before, follow me. Peter realised how passionately he loved Jesus and he understood that Jesus still trusted him and had a task for him to do that would be uniquely his. In our own intimate moments with Jesus, Perhaps we often find ourselves most aware of our sin and our shortcomings. But perhaps we become most aware too of the depth of Jesus' love for us, of his promise that he will not give up on us, of the plan that he has for us. In the busyness of our lives, it can be very, very hard to find time for those intimate moments with him. But they are the glue that holds our relationship with Jesus together. In the week that lies ahead, perhaps we might look especially for times when we may be alone with him. Let's pray. Living God, your son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in all his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. 
and we say the old and familiar words of the prayer that Jesus himself taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope. He has raised Jesus from the dead. May God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen us to walk with him in his risen life. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, rest upon us and remain with us this day and forevermore. Amen.